So now, since we have understood the core intuition behind, uh, uh, so we have seen the core intuition behind merge sort. Now let's go and write some code or pseudo code to understand how to take this problem and actually convert it to code. Right? We have understood it intuitively, but how do you write code for it? Right? So again, we are using the the pseudo code. We are using the pseudo code. We are using the pseudo code from CLRS textbook, as we have discussed. Uh, in the previous videos, we will be using this code because it's both rigorous, clean, and language independent, right? So, so we have we have two functions here. The first function is called a merge sort function, which has three parameters to the function or three inputs to the function. We have the array. So this is my actual array that we have, right? P is the index of the first element that I want to sort. So, for example, if you take this array, right? What is the index of the first element I want to sort? One. Right, so p is equal to one in this when we start here, right, and r is basically this. So this is equal to r, and the array that I want to pass to this function is array a, right? So okay, so p is basically the index of the first element, the index of the first element that you want to sort, index of the first element, index of the. I'm writing element in short as elt first element that you want to sort and the last element last element index this is the last element index right so what would i pass initially initially i would say merge sort merge sort a 1 comma 8 for this i'll try to connect the connect the code to this example so i'll pass a 1 comma 8 right that's what i would pass now as soon as you pass here first it checks if p is less than r right so this is your p this is your r right p is certainly less than r right if p is equal to r what does it mean if p if p is equal to r what does it mean it means what you have passed to this function is basically this implies that the array a this implies that array a is of size 1 is is of is of size 1 right so unless the past array, the array that you're passing is of size one, or you've done some mistake for the values of P and R. See, P can never be less than R, right? Then it makes no sense. That means you've given the inputs wrong, right? As long as you give valid inputs, right? What is a valid input? A one comma one is valid, right? Because your first element and the last element that you want to sort is the same. In such a case, this loop would not run if P equals to R. Only when P is less than R, this loop would run. Okay, so that's what it is. Now I'm computing Q. So what is Q here in this case? My Q would be P plus R by two. So this this function that you see, this this function that you see here is called the floor function, right? For example, if I have 8.2, what is floor of 8.2? It is the nearest integer that is smaller than eight. So this is equal to eight, right? What is floor of of course, which is less than eight itself. What is floor of 8.9? Floor of 8.9 is also eight, right? Floor basically is the nearest integer that is less than the real value that you've passed here. So this is called the floor function. Whenever you see this, this is called the floor function. This is called the floor function. There is something called a seal function also. Seal function looks like this. So the seal of any number, seal of 8.2, or the ceiling of 8.2 is 9, right? It is the nearest integer, which is greater than or equal to this real value. That's what the seal function does. So we are using the floor function because P plus R may not be exactly divisible by 2, right? So that, that's something that we have to keep in mind. Okay, so since we have understood what floor and seal is and how floor and seal are represented in this pseudocode, right? What becomes to your Q? Your Q equals to P plus R, which is 1 plus 8, which is 9 by 2, right? And floor of it. 9 by 2 floor is basically floor of 4.5, which is equal to 4, right? So then it says, see, this is a recursion, if you notice. So since all of you know some programming, you must have seen recursion. We've seen recursion in the C, uh, when we learned C programming language, right? So it's very, very simple, right? In any programming language, whether it's Java or Python, you have the concept of recursion. So what am I saying? Now I get this. 
I've computed Q. Now I'm calling two other functions. I'm calling the merge sort function from within the merge sort function. So what does this merge sort function do now? It says, first you sort. First you perform merge sort on the, the sub array. So you're given this array 1 to 8. You're given this array 1 to 8. So what we are saying here, we have called the merge sort on this array. So it says, first you perform the merge sort on APQ, which means it says perform the merge sort on A124 first. A124 first, right? Because your Q equals to 4. And once you finish the merge sort on this, you also perform a merge sort on A5 to 8. Because you see this, Q plus 1 to R. This is the recursion here, right? And then once you perform, see, this will now break down. So the moment you call this merge sort, so what is happening here is, first you have this input, you call the merge sort on array 1 to 8. It would break the array into, it would call merge sort with 1 to 4 and 5 to 8. This would again, when you when you run merge sort on this, because this is not an array of size 1. Look at this, this is not, a, this is not an array of size 1. So it would again break this into array of 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. This would again break it into 1, 2, 3, 4. I am writing the actual indices here. right? Now you have only one array. Sorry, you have an array of size 1. right? Then now what happens? Now this loop will not be executed. So you are basically, what this recursion, what this recursion is enabling is breaking up your array into these smaller arrays until we have just arrays of size 1. That, that's what this recursion is exactly doing. Right at the end, there is one more function. There is a different function here is called merge. Right? What does this merge do now? Let's let's see the, let's see the pseudo code for merge. So in a nutshell, what this is doing is when you when you when you ask to merge sort an array from index p to r, it is literally calling recursively as long as the size of the array is not equal to one. Right? It is basically breaking this array into two equal parts. It's basically breaking the array into two equal parts and again calling merge sort on top of it. It will keep doing it till the time you have only arrays of size one left. Right? That's that's what this recursion, that's what this do. This is basically the core of your recursion. This is basically the core of your recursion. Right? That's what that's what is happening here. But there is another function called merge. So this function merge basically this function merge starts merging. So you're doing the division operator or the divide operator using recursion. But of course, you also have the merge operation here. Right now, let's see how the merge operation works, because this is another function that we'll go through. Right. This is a standard example of very, this is a very nice recursion. This is an example of recursion, right? And recursion is a form of divide and conquer. Recursion is a, is a concept of, is based on the concept of divide and conquer. Because you have a larger array, you're breaking it up into smaller arrays. And you're trying a way to combine these smaller arrays using this merge function. That's the core of it. Of course, in any recursion, you need to have a termination condition on when this recursion would stop. And here the termination condition is that if the if the array that you that you input A is of size one, then the recursion would stop. That's the core of recursion, right? What do you need in recursion? You need a you need a termination step, right? You need a way to break your problem into sub problems or smaller problems of the same type. That's that's the core of recursion, right? And now let's go and see how this function merge will work, right? So let's go and see the, again, this is from CLRS, just a screenshot of the CLR, CLRS code. Now let's see how does merge work, right? Merge takes two inputs, okay? Or merge takes an array A, right? This is my array A. And it says, I want to, I want to merge the array from index p okay let's say this index is p this index is r and this index is q right so if you look at if if you look at this code if you look at this code if you look at this code how are we what are the what are we passing to the merge sort to, to the merge function sorry we are saying that given an array of size p to r right we are breaking it into an array of from index p to q right and an index q plus 1 to r that's what we are doing right p to q q plus 1 to r but once i have sorted them i want to merge them because it's it, it keeps calling merge sort recursively at some point i need to start merging them 
when I'm merging them, I want to merge the whole data back from P to R, right? But I have to know where this index is, Q. So to my merge, right, to my merge function, I'm passing, so to my merge function, right, to my merge function, I'm calling, okay, to my merge function, I'm passing A, P, Q, and R. Now let's see how, let's see how the merge function works, right? Let's take this, right? Let's take this array A. Your P, Q and your P could need not be one always, right? Because when you're, when you're here, suppose if I want to merge, suppose I want to merge these two. Okay, this is index one, this is index two, this is at index three, this is at index four, index five, six, seven, eight. When I'm merging them, right? Let's assume I'm merging these two. What would my P be? My P be equal to three. My R be equal to four, right? And what would my Q be? My Q is nothing but 3 plus 4 by 2, which is 7 by 2, and floor of it, floor of this is equal to 3, right? So now let's let's work from here, right? So first thing that I'm doing here, like if you have this P to Q, sorry, P to R, I'm sorry. Let's take an example so that it's easier, right? P to R, and this is my Q. So let's say you my P is equal to 1, my R is equal to 8, my Q is equal to 4, right? Which is equivalent to, which is equivalent to merging these two. Look at this. Because this is, look at this subarray. This subarray is from index 1 to 4. This subarray is from index 5 to 8, right? We are trying to merge these two subarrays, right? So I'm taking this example literally, right? I'm basically trying to merge these two subarrays. Okay, let's look at these subarrays first, right? This is my first subarray. This is my second subarray. Uh, what is my subarray? 1, 3, 5, 6. 1, 3, 5, 6. And this is at index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4 in my actual array. What about this? Uh, you have 2, 4, 7, 8. You have 2, 4, 7, 8. Right? This is at index 5, 6, 7, 8. Now I want to merge both of them. To do that, what would I pass? I would call the merge function with p equals to 1, r equals to 8 and Q is equal to four. I would pass the array. Now, first thing it computes is N1 and N2. So N1 is nothing but, so from the formula, you can easily understand that N1 is the size of this array. So N1 is, right, Q minus P plus one, right? So Q minus P, four minus three is, uh, four minus one is three plus one. So N1 equals to four. Similarly, N2 is the size of this array. Again, they, know, they need not always be the same, right? So the size of this array is also four. So N1 is equal to four, N2 is equal to four. Now we want to create, so this is a comment here. Now we want to create new two arrays because this whole thing is still in array A. This whole thing is still in array A. Now we want to copy them, right? We want to copy them into two arrays. First array is called L, the second array is called R. Okay, so whatever, so this whole thing is still in array A. So we create two arrays called L and R and just simply copy these elements. So what am I doing here? I'm just from one to N1, which means for take each of these elements and copy these elements. So that's what this loop is doing. This loop is basically copying each of these elements and placing it here. So you have one, three, five, six. Similarly for R, you have two, four, seven, eight. Now look at look at these two lines. So these two loops. So this loop. Okay. So this loop here, this loop in four and five is basically copying all the data from P to Q into a new array called L. Right. And it's taking all the data from. So this loop is create taking all the data from A Q to R and copying it to an array called R. Right. Capital R. Right? So this is a left subarray. That's why it's called the L. This is the right subarray called R. Now, what do I do? Now, I, for the last element, I'll add an infinity. That's what these two lines are doing. The last element in both, I'm adding an element called infinity. Now, look at this. Now, these two lines, this is initializing I to 1, J to 1. Now, what does this loop do? Look at this loop. Look at these five lines or six lines. It says from P to R. Now I have my array A, right? I still have my array A from 1, 2, 3, 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाउ आई हैव टू नाउ कंबाइन दीज टू आर एस एल एंड आर राइट वेव सीन दिस राइट वेव सीन दिस वेर वी इनिशियलाइज आई हियर जे हियर we keep incrementing it and keep copying this now you might wonder why are we creating these two sub arrays l and r and copying the elements from a that's because we will find for example first i'll try to find the smallest element between these two it is 1 so i'll copy one here right my i gets incremented now now while i am doing it the original elements in a could get overwritten right when they get overwritten i might lose some of the data that's why i'm copying the elements copying the data that i have in the original array a into two sub arrays l and r and then merging it carefully so look look at what this loop does from p to r which means from 1 to 8 what is it doing if the left element if li is less than equal to rj if this li is less than equal to rj right you move take the smaller element and place it here so ak right so k equals to p to r which means from p to r for every element i try to find which of them is the smaller one and i copy it because the left element is smaller i am incrementing i otherwise i'll increment j so this is this loop this loop that we see here this loop that we see here is exactly the same as incrementing i incrementing j and copying the smallest element here that's what this loop does right i hope this is clear now now the whole thing we have to see the bigger picture also okay if you look at the bigger picture see the code here is very very simple you have two functions the first function is basically a recursive function what is this recursive function doing if you give it an array a if you give it an array a this recursion is breaking it into and if you call merge sort on this array it's going to break this into smaller parts it's going to break this into smaller parts till the time you have arrays of only size 1 right that's what it's doing right and once i have arrays of only size 1 i cannot go any further then i would call the merge function so i've broken it up enough now i'll call the merge function so these two would get merged 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 and the recursion remember the recursion also opens up so these two would get combined these two would get combined finally these two would get combined to a big array that's what is happening here in the recursion so there are two functions here merge sort literally it's just a five line code which says you have a termination condition here and you're breaking it into merge sorts of same type the most important function in whole of merge sort is the merge function and what is this merge function doing literally this merge function is basically copying the elements suppose if i have an array here a sorry a p q and r it is basically copying these elements to a new array it is also copying these elements to a new array and then it has this index i index j it keeps comparing these elements and putting the smallest elements back here exactly what we have seen in this in this step in the intuition in the, in the intuition part in the previous video right that's what it's doing this code is very very simple don't get overwhelmed by the size of the code very simple i'll repeat it for you compute the size of your arrays then create left array and right array by just copying the elements right from a to p and q plus 1 to r just make the last elements infinity initialize your i and j to ones and in this loop you are basically literally picking up the smallest element between these two sub arrays placing it in a and incrementing whichever is the whichever index corresponds to the smaller value that's all you are doing here right so the two functions here not one function because it's a recursion function here right we'll also understand how much time it takes all time complexity space complexity we will see that in the next video